Hello, everyone. I'm glad to give an introduction about our recent work, ITDSE, an invariance risk minimized transfer microarchitecture design space exploration. And um, this is the outline of my work. And let's start with the background. To start with, the microarchitecture refers to the internal organization and the detailed implementation of a microprocessor. And microarchitecture design space exploration involves finding different configurations with the desired performance, power, and area. There are two major challenges for the microarchitecture design space exploration tasks. First, rapidly growing design space pose challenges due to the huge amount of the configurations the very complex interfeature interactions and the mixed type parameters. Secondly, getting desired evaluation metric for one microarchitecture configuration through the very large scale integration, the VLSI flow, is very time consuming. And this makes diverse configurations challenging to acquire. Previously, in real industry, the most Rely, the mostly relies on the computer architects to manually configure the design parameters. And this requires sufficient domain knowledge and a large amount of human labor for the computer architects. And in academic research, different machine learning based process simulation models or the surrogate models aims to accelerate the evaluation process and the sampling process. But the effectiveness of these methods is contingent upon the quality of the training data and the model granularity. And there are two facts existed in real industry that catch our attention. The first is the different generations of the microprocessors are developed based on a common baseline microarchitecture. And only minor improvements are applied across consecutive microarchitecture generations. And second one is some general relationships exist for the design features due to the similar microarchitecture design par paradigm. And we also give the example in the original papers. And considering this, there's our previous work, AANTL, and leverage the historical data for the new tasks with the cross-domain mix-up and uh, AAM-based feature extraction. But this method ignores the feature interactions, it lacks in the interpretability, and it presumes that the identical design spaces for the source and ta target tasks. And it is a process simulation method, but not a DSE method. So given the above discussions, we claim that the characteristics of certain design features have similar or even identical effects on the PPA values in different generations of a microarchitecture design. And we want to extract the relationship that is approximately invariant among different historical source design tasks, even equipped with different design spaces. And the transfer domain knowledge from different source tasks to the target space design space exploration task. And let's talk about some preliminary knowledge. And here is a figure to show the uh, typical microarchitecture pipeline. And for the design of a microprocessor, there are several key components. And this exhibits, uh, and this exhibits a typical microarchitecture pipeline. We mainly focus on searching for the optimal values relates to some of these typical components. And let's talk about the invariant risk minimization paradigm. It allows for the automatic uh, feature extraction of invariant features among different but related tasks. It says that the prediction function f prime consists of a feature extractor phi and a regressor h. Here the u and w are the parameters. And the idea is to learn the feature representation phi that will facilitate the development of a regressor edge optimal for all training tasks concurrently. And these can be expressed in the equation one. And we want 
the regressor predict well, and we want them the prediction ability of an invariant among different source tasks. Here, the R means the risks under the S source task, and L is the loss functions. Actually, this is a very difficult bi-level optimization equation, and it can be relaxed to this practical IRM v1 representation. And given that, we can we can uh, give some definitions. First, we define the source tasks that are previously explored microarchitecture design tasks, and the data set with ns samples contains both ds dimensional parameters and the three dimensional PPA value vector sets. And for the target task, we only have the set of legal parameter vectors. And for the Pareto optimalities, for a M objective minimization problem, the X1 is deemed to dominate X2. If for a, for a, a dimensional element of objective function Fx1 is no larger than the Fx2, and there exists at least one dimension value Fx1 that is strictly less than Fx2. And the collection of the solutions that remain non-dominated by others constitutes the Pareto optimal set. And given that, we can define our microarchitecture transferring design space exploration problems. So given S source tasks with the explored dataset D1 to DS and a target, sam a target sample DT, the objective is to utilize the information from historical source tasks and improve the efficiency of finding a series of microprocessor design configurations X in the target task that forms the Pareto optimality among the associated of set, subset of Y. And here comes our ITDSC algorithms. And here is a workflow of the framework we can see in the yellow block, the source task one and source task two, featuring uh, search dimensions D1 and D2 respectively, are employed to pre-train surrogate models. And to accommodate the varying design spaces, the FT transformer ensemble is adopted as a surrogate model for a robust feature extraction and uncertainty estimations. And to warm start a new task by knowledge fusion, the invariant risk minimization paradigm is employed. After that, in the, the blue block, the pre-trained surrogate model is then utilized for the Pareto optimal set selection on the target task using a multi-objective Bayesian optimization method. And next, let's talk about the first part, the customized surrogate model with the transformer. In real, industry, in real industry settings, the number of the search dimensions in the target tasks often varies. And to address this issue, we use a customized FT transformer architecture to conduct the feature extractions. And FT transformer is adaption for the tabular domain. It consists of a feature tokenizer layer and multiple transformer layers, and followed by a prediction layer. And the feature, uh, the, the feature tokenizer layer can accept the vectors with both numerical and categorical parameters. And for the ice parameters, the feature embedding is calculated in these ways. And here the W is the weight and the E is the one hot vectors um, for the numerical parameters and categorical vectors respectively. And the transformed embedding is to stack all elements plus a CLS token. And, and this CLS token serves as the ag aggregate representation of the input vector for the, purpose, for the purpose of the feature extractions. And we use the stacked F transformer layers on the transformed embedding T to extract the features with the self-attention mechanisms. And um, to pre-train on the multiple source tasks as a very simple example 
for example, for the source task one and source task two, the initialized FT transformer embedding weight and the bias is W and the B. And here X1 and X2 are the uh, original parameter vectors. And the transformed embedding is, uh, is, is transformed into T. And for each PPA values, we pre-train the FT transformer with the linear output layer to optimize the objective function. Once the pre-train is finished, this model can be transferred to the target task with the transformer layers. And the linear output layer, the CLS embedding within the feature tokenizer layer are utilized to initialize the target FT transformer models. Then we will learn how to use, how to learn the invariant relationships between the microarchitecture parameters and the PPA values from the previous source tasks using the Bayesian invariant risk minimized feature extractions. We have already introduced the RM paradigm. However, it could cause overfitting in real applications. The standard RM formulation in the previous equations utilize only a single point estimation of a regressor parameter W. And this could lead to the instability in situations with insufficient explored data from the source tasks. And here we use the Bayesian inference of IRM to mitigate these issues. And the feature extractor using Bayesian inference IRM is derived by directly incorporating the posterior distributions. The idea is we want the distribution of transformed data T and the posterior of predictor given T to be invariant across task S. And finally, we want it to lead to approximate equivalence between the posterior from each source task. And the objective functions now can be expressed given the different uh, data representations. And here, the GU and GUS is approximate estimation of the posterior of W given the transferred data T. And we can find that the first term maximizes the expected log likelihood of the shared posterior GU by optimizing over the feature extractor parameter U. And it encourages U to retain the information for data distribution fitting. While the second term requires the transformed data distribution to be stable among different tasks with the feature extractor phi. And actually the posterior P, uh, uh, the posterior P of W given the transformed data T is hard to estimate in large models. And here we use the variational inference as an ad adaptive to estimate the, approximate the result. We approximate the posterior distribution by maximizing the evidence lower bound. And it can be represented in these equations and we assume the GU is a factorized multi-dimensional multi -dimensional Gaussian distribution. And the task specific GUS will approach GU when more task invariant features are extracted. And we can use a one-step gradient descent to approximate this GU. And finally, we will use the Monte Carlo samples to estimate the penalties in these equations. And in each training iterations, we sample a batch of the data from each source task, and we transform them using the feature extractor and update the GU and the GUS respectively. We then use the Monte Carlo samples U to maximize the objective functions until the training finished. And in, after this, we will return back the trained feature extractor and the regressor. And to efficiently searching the optimal points from the latent space, we adopt the multi-objective Bayesian optimization framework. And for the target, tar for the target task, given a new point, the posterior is approximated as a Gaussian distribution. 
And to improve the uncertainty estimations, here we use the FT transformer ensemble as the surrogate model. And in this way, the mean and the variance can be enhanced. Another very important component of the Bayesian optimization is the acquisition functions. And in our work, we adopt the very famous expected hypervolume improvement acquisition functions. So the hypervolume is uh, evaluates the m-dimensional hyperrectangle bounded by a referenced point and the approximated Pareto frontier. And we want the updated Pareto frontier acquire better hypervolume, that is uh, hypervolume improvement. And we use the Monte Carlo integrations to approximate the expected hypervolume improvement with the uh, sampling k times. And this can be expressed in this formula. And here the f prime k is the case function evaluation from the distribution of these uh, approximated functions. And that's all about the algorithm part. We conduct experiments to prove the efficiency of our methods. The experiments are performed on an in-house 64-bit high-performance commercial microprocessor. The BLSI flow is used to evaluate the PPA values of each microarchitecture configuration. The RTL design is generated from the chisel, and we obtain the performance and the power value from the benchmark simulation after the physical implementations. And we can also get the area value from the physical implementation tool. Due to the commercial confidentiality of the microarchitecture, we normalize the original PPA values. Generally, we have 55 parameters with more than 10 to the 40 combinations, as can be seen in these tables. For task A, B, and C, they share the same design space. And for task D, we can only tune 53 out of 55 parameters. And different tasks contain different number of evaluated samples. And here is a TSNE visualization of four tasks. We can see the data distribution are quite different for each task. Then let's talk about the evaluation metric. The first evaluation metric is the hypervolume. As we can see previously, it measures the improvement of the new Pareto frontier of a reference point compared with the previous one. The second one is called the average distance to reference set, ADRS. It evaluates the closeness of a learned Pareto optimal set P to a ground truth Pareto optimal set P prime. And of course, we want the hypervolume to be as large as possible, and we want the ADRS to be as small as possible. And in the first experiment, we evaluate the DSE DSC performance using the transfer power from the same design space. And for the task A, B, and C, we iteratively use two tasks as the source tasks and the left one as the target task. For the ANNTL, it uses the data mix-up and ANN-based microarchitecture simulation models. For the empirical risk minimizations, ERM, it uses the, the single multilayer perception we trained with the merge of source task using the NLL loss. And we use these two as our surrogate models. For the deep ensemble, it used ensembles of MLP to get better uncertainty estimations. And the RMV1 used the MLP ensemble we trained with the RMV1 objective. Our results outperforms to a very large extent in both the ADRS and hypervolume as can be seen in this figure. And this is the Pareto optimal set found um, using, different, using different methods. The left one is the performance versus area, and the right one is the power versus area. And in the second experiment, we investigate the transfer performance between different design spaces. And here we use the task D with only 53 dimensional design spaces to be the one of the source task and the one and the target task respectively. And to the best of our knowledge, the previous methods cannot spread knowledge across different design spaces. 
so we conduct it as an ablation study. From top to the bottom, without pre-train, means we initialize an FT transformer ensemble without pre-training. And without ensemble means we pre-train a single FT transformer using the Bayesian IRM objective. And without IRM means we just pre-train the FT transformer ensemble using the NLL loss. And with the IRM V1 means we pre-train the FT transformer ensemble with the original IRM V1 objective. As we can be observed from the tables, all these modules, all these methods are worse than our proposed method, which which proves the necessity of each part. And using this method, we can efficiently transfer the knowledge from the previous task, even with different design spaces to the target task. And the experiment proves the efficiency of our method. And that's all for my introduction. Thanks for your attention.